So after upgrading our editing rig to the Core i7-6800K, found out that this sucker was hot. Really hot. Like, to the point where I never even used an air cooler on it. Uh, I've kept it underwater ever since we got it. Now, not to a scent back whenever they sent us the NHC14S to do a review on that we put up on the site earlier this year. They also sent out an NHD15S. The NHD15S was a redesign of the NHD15 to accommodate for the PCI Express slotting on the X99 motherboards where the first PCI slot for your graphics card was a little bit closer to the CPU to the point where the NHD15 had some issues with clearance. The heatsink would often hit against a graphics card making you have to move it down further and the setup, which isn't exactly ideal. You want that graphics card as close to the processors you can get it for the PCI lanes, you know. I decided to take a gamble and to see if the NHD 15S really could handle a processor like the 6800K. So we're gonna test it at stock with stock XMP profiles for DDR4, 2400 megahertz in quad channel. Then we're gonna do the XMP2 uh, profile, which bumps all six cores to 3.8 gigahertz and the memory up to 2666, resulting in a heavier load on the processor itself, as well as the IMC should push the temperatures up a fair bit. And then we're going to finish it off running my daily overclocks that I use for all of our testing, as well as whenever I'm doing editing and rendering at right at 4.1 gigahertz with 2666 megahertz on the RAM at 1.25 volts. So that's the hottest that I really run this card and it still gets decently warm under water. So we're going to see if this thing has what it takes to control that. Now taking a look at the cooler itself, it comes packaged in traditional knock to a faction where everything is packed in perfectly, but unlike other coolers that they ship out, they have one box for all of the accessories rather than individual boxes for Intel AMD as well as the accessory box. And moving on to the cooler itself, it's packed in its nice own little box with the fan already installed. Now, the thing here to take a note of that separates that NHD15S from the D15 is that offset for the heatsink. You can see it's slightly offset from the base rather than directly over it, which allows for that clearance. Now, installing it on the X99 platform is extremely easy. All you have to do is install the, uh, the standoffs to the CPU mount, then add the SecuFirm 2 brackets to it and the screws down on top of those, and then boom, you drop the cooler right down on top of it, screw it down with the included screwdriver, the two screws, that's it. Then slide the fan down, clamp it on, plug it in, and you're good to go. Now, something to keep in mind before you start, we get to the results and you see our numbers here. This is an NZXT S340 case with two 140 millimeter Noctua fans in the front as intake. The same 150 millimeter fan used on the process, on the cooler itself is actually in the roof of the cooler or the case for exhaust, as well as an NFF12P or an NFF12 in the rear for exhaust. So these are all Noctua fans. We basically said we took this system to Browntown, all Noctua cooling throughout it. Now that may factor in some differences with what you may see in your build, depending on the intake fans and the exhaust fans. Now they did do, all, we're doing all of these tests with the side panel on, just like I would be using it at home. I wanna see if this cooler can do what I need it to, because I love how quiet Noctua coolers are and their fans, and it is, believe it or not, a little bit lighter than carrying it around with all of the water cooling and stuff. So let's jump in, let's take a look at it with the stock results and see where they land. All right guys, so here we are after about 10 minutes, we're at nine minutes, 50 seconds with Ida64 at the stock frequencies for the 6800. So it's settling when all cores are fully activated, it's settling around 3.6 gigahertz. And it looks like our highest temperature is 50 degrees C on three of the cores, 48 on two and 45 on one. So clearly stock speeds are not a problem for the uh, Noctua NHD15. We're going to shut it down and we're going to enable the XMP2 profile where it's going to run all four, all, all six cores at 3.8 gigahertz and the memory will jump up from uh, 2400 megahertz to 2666, putting a little bit more stress on the IMC and we'll see just how much these temperatures rise as a result of that. And after about 10 minutes of running that, we'll come back and we'll see just uh, what those numbers are. And then we'll move on to actual overclocking and results. And here we are after, well, right at 11 minutes at 3.8 with the 2,666 uh, megahertz on the RAM. And we see our hottest core has bumped up to 56 degrees C. So we're looking at a six degree uh, Celsius increase just by changing those few parameters. So a good little increase on the temperatures, but we're still okay. Everything is mid to lower 50s except the one core that's down at 47. So we're going to shut it down. We're going to run it back up at 4.1. 
gigahertz with 2666 memory and uh, the voltage at 1.25 volts. That's a manual overclock to get there and we're going to see if the NHD15S can handle a manual overclock. Alright, so here we are on the third and final test with it running at 4.08 gigahertz, so right at 4.1 gigahertz with the memory at 2666. Now, it has been running for almost 14 minutes now. I accidentally went a little bit long, but figured that's even better to show you the uh, end result here with this. But what you see here is the hottest core topped out at 64C, and all of the rest of the cores stuck pretty close to around 60. So I think it's fair to say that the Noctua NHD15S is quite capable of handling the i7-6800K, even though it only has one fan. And it is extremely quiet still, even with the overclock, and it's sitting just behind the monitor here. I'll slide it over just to show you. Let's uh, slide that over, and there it is right there. So, I mean, it's just right here behind it. Uh, so, let's jump on into the conclusion. Now, there you go, guys. You've seen all of the temperatures. Stock temperatures are very cool, very quiet. The slight overclock with the XMP2, still fairly cool. Pretty good job there. Overclock to what I feel comfortable overclocking it to did a very good job keeping the CPU well within uh, the the thermal limits and even allowing for a little bit more if I wanted to go. But truth is, this processor does not overclock very well. This is actually the once you hit this the thing hits a voltage wall and it takes so much voltage to get any faster it makes no sense whatsoever to ever run this setup at that point. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you found it interesting or entertaining, feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you all in the next video.